Hey, what's up you guys? Peek out here in Singapore and I wanted to jump on and talk about something that is pretty damn important to me. I think this is something that everybody should be really considering, at least like thinking about. Um, whether you support or not, that's, I mean, I'm totally up to you. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, obviously, but, um, human rights, man. Human rights in all of its beautiful forms. And I really wish that people would stop drawing lines um, because drawing lines means you divide people rather than include them. And yeah, I don't like drawing lines. I don't like coloring inside the lines. <laughs> um, anyway, so the reason I entitled this, and I probably will go back and try and change the title. I'm trying to think about it right now. It's very long, but today I want to talk about India's penal code section 377 because today is, drum roll please, it is September 6th, which is the anniversary. It's been a year now since they overtoned, overtoned, overturned, um, a law that was made in colonial times because the British decided that um, that anything outside of opposite sex relations was unnatural and they used words like carnal and unnatural and against God and I kind of feel some kind of way about that because I would hate for someone to tell me how I can and can't live now, you know, what safety might look like? Okay, that's different, but this isn't a safe thing. And while the, the code said that anyone who was caught having unnatural relations with people or carnal intercourse with people of the same sex would be punishable by life imprisonment. Now, to me, that sounds like a death sentence. If you have to spend the rest of your life in prison to correct your ways, or if people around you were worried about you being found out so they try and do corrective things like force you into rape situations to try and change your mind about who you love or what you're attracted to that makes me feel some kind of way now while i am straight i still believe in the right to choose it's the same thing with abortion i believe in your right to choose i don't know what your situation is i don't know what kind of you know things you're facing if you feel like you know you are not sure of your gender great do what makes you happy. Do what makes you feel strong. If you feel like you're attracted to the same sex, perfect. I feel like if you're not out there hurting people or trying to convince people of your way to live, then there's no harm in just living. If you're not bothering people, as in like purposely upsetting people on purpose, then I don't see the problem. It's almost like, you know, breastfeeding in public. The women's right to vote. Moving to the back of the bus, colored toilets versus regular toilets, like all that shit, man. You're not actually hurting anybody. You're not actually bothering people. You exist. You were born this way for a reason. You feel these things for a reason. And I feel this way about this for a reason. Now, yeah, I did think about it a little bit. I was worried, you know, that people would take it the wrong way what am I who am I to support a cause like this because I don't quite identify myself as any of those letters except for maybe the plus sign um but I do believe in the cause because I believe in my daughter's right to choose I believe in my brother's right to choose I believe in my cousins nieces nephews uncles aunts whatever their right to choose I don't know if I'll ever get married again I don't know if I'll find somebody who wants to spend the rest of their lives with me. I'm kind of insane. Um, but I do know that there is a stigma for women and men over a certain age who never got married. I do know that there is a stigma for young people who decide that they like specific things that aren't generally the norm. I know it's difficult to come out and say what you want. I know that in any relationship, if you suddenly tell them that you don't like the way they treat you, they get offended. And as it is, it takes a lot of courage to come up and say that. So can you imagine telling people that, hey, you know what? I'm attracted this way. This gets me excited. I love women or I love men or I don't feel like I fit in this body. I don't feel like I identify with the gender I was born into. Can you imagine what kind of courage it would take to say that? I know back in the day there was um, it was a big to-do. I think the movie Bombay is still banned in India. But it's, it's so upset people. Why? And I'm not sure if I got this right or not. But because a Hindu person married a Muslim person. And I said person because I can't remember if it was the man or if it was the woman. But 
they married across religions, and that was a big to-do. But the kids were just beautiful kids. They, they worshipped both ways. They spoke both languages, Hindi and Tamil. Like, what was the damn problem? We have crossovers. We have Tamil movies that are dubbed in Hindi. We have Hindi movies that are dubbed in Tamil. What's the big deal? I know Sri Lankans out there that have been scattered to the four winds because of the war. And this is Sinhalese and Tamil. And they still want to fight about, oh, y'all over there and us over here. Nah, come on, man. Our parts are exactly the same as each other's. We all have a brain, two eyes and nose. We put our pants on the same way that everybody else puts their pants on one leg at a time. There is no us and them. It is we. So when I got to think about all those things, this fight that people are facing right now is no different from any of those fights. This fight is for all of us. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. When my kid has kids, I don't know. But I know that I want to take a stand. I know that I want to prove to people that we can all coexist. I know that for a fact because back in Yogaville, this is what we did. All the religions worshipped at the same time, the same way, yet was in English. And we had several different uh, people that would present in different languages, different cultures. And we all accepted. Why? Because we all talk about the light. We all talk about being good, doing good, serving. Love all, serve all. Eat to live, live to serve. Like all of that. We talk about all of that. We live all of that. Karma yoga, Raja yoga, Hatha yoga, all of the yogas. I think it's important that we stand up for each other. There are a lot of people out there that benefit from us being divided. There are a lot of people that benefit from us being persecuted in smaller, smaller groups. Why? Because the general theme in war is divide and conquer, right? To get you so incensed about something that if I divide you guys, you will feel afraid, you will feel unprotected, and you will cower. This is why I'm an inclusion fanatic. This is why I want all of us to stand together. I don't care who your mother is. I don't care where you came from. I don't care how much money you have in your pocket. If you need help, you need help. If you need love and support, you need love and support. If I were to line everybody up and ask how many of you are angry with your parents, I'm pretty sure all of you at some point would have stepped forward. And that has nothing to do with the way you were raised. It has nothing to do with, you know, the socioeconomic class that you belong to, the caste that you were, none of that. At some point or another, every one of y'all were mad at your parents. And that doesn't even mean that they were bad parents. It just means that at some point y'all didn't see eye to eye and you put your foot down and they put your foot, their foot down and it was just ugly for a minute. <laughs> I bet if I lined all of you up and asked you how important is love to you in your life, every last one of you step forward. If I asked all of you to come forward and say, how many of you have had trouble with alcohol, trouble with any substance how many of you have tried to use something some some alcohol substance food to cover your feelings every last one of you there are more similarities between us than there are differences that's the reason i actually chose to support colorfulearth.org yes they are based in germany yes it was primarily created to help Tamil people come out and be proud of who they are regardless of what's going on in their culture, in their families. And I know it's the hardest thing in the world to do, but you know what? What's the alternative? To pretend that you can be something you're not? How long can you go on doing that? That takes a lot of energy, y'all. So what started out as a celebration because it's been a year since this particular law was overturned in India. I want to celebrate life in general. Life and love. 
I need love, so do you. I need support, so do you. I need love in the form of friendship. So do you. I don't see difference. I don't see all the letters. Yeah, it may take take me a minute to figure out how to behave around you, like how I can be myself and you can be yourself and we can have fun together. It may take me a minute, but that, that happens with everybody. But the point is, I don't see color, caste, or creed. I don't see letters. You are not just a letter, you guys. You are beautiful, big-hearted people. And I couldn't be more proud to be associated with colorful org. So when you have a chance, please, Show your support, show your love in whatever small capacity you can. I bet you every one of you know somebody who has struggled with their identity. Someone who has fought to openly be who they really are. Support them. Show them that it's safe and it's okay. Because there's nothing unnatural about it. It's in the Vedas. It says, even what is unnatural is natural. Because without it, we wouldn't have blue eyes and blonde hair. Without it, we wouldn't have fair skin and light skin. And dark skin. What was I talking about? <laughs> we wouldn't have curly hair and straight hair. What's common and what's rare, it's all natural. It's all natural. I love you guys. I hope this helps. Talk to you soon.